Welcome to this special edition of Frequency Matters, the RF and Microwave Update series. I'm Pat Hindle, and I'm here with my special guest, Tim Lee, the IEEE IMS 2020 Chair. Welcome, Tim. Hey, Pat. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I appreciate very much this opportunity to talk to you today and tell you what's going on with the uh, International Micro Symposium uh, for 2020. So I'm sure you probably have the uh, most difficult year of all to be involved in the IMS event. Um, kudos to you and your team for managing this. Can you tell us about the recent decision to uh, go virtual for 2020? That'll be taking place in August. Maybe some kind of timeline and decision process that you went through to get here. Yeah, yes, Pat, uh, that's a very good question. I think a lot of people in our microwave community have been trying to find out what's gonna be happening. Because we know that IMS is the premier uh, event conference that attracts all, all, all people in the microwave industry. So starting uh, up to March uh, of this year, we're still running the normal course of things and organizing for uh, the conference and the exhibition uh, with full intent of going with, uh, uh, hosted in the Los Angeles Convention Center. But uh, we know that the, the world's changed in that month of March and has, uh, has, uh, has really been uh, quite different in, in terms of affecting all, all parts of our lives. So from March through May 1st, we were monitoring the situation. Uh, we created the IMS response team, which was basically doing triage on a daily basis, trying to figure out what were the local, state, and national uh, restrictions, uh, travel lockdowns, availability of uh, venues, and then just concern for our safety of our community we kept monitoring that, and, and, and uh, by the time we hit uh, middle of April, we were really seeing that the forces that be uh, uh, would cause us not to be able to hold a conference as we intended, and that's why we announced on May 1 that we will go virtual. Uh, our intent right now is to give ourselves enough time to do a quality job in converting from uh, physical to a virtual conference. So we decided to not have it on the, uh, the original dates in the third week of June, but to give us enough time to create a quality program in early August. Well, I think you made the best decision possible in the light of the way things are. Uh, what are some of the main factors that led you to go virtual as opposed to delaying or even canceling? That's a very good question, Pat. Uh, we really appreciate the fact that IMS is the nexus for uh, three groups of our stakeholders. Uh, the authors who like to present their research work, um, the, uh, the professional uh, microwave engineer who are the technical attendees, and then the exhibitors. So all three parts play into our decision making. First of all, we knew that we have to uh, capture all the work that's being presented, the papers that were reviewed and accepted. So we have a clear direct path we knew that if we have physical presentations or virtual, we had a path for them to get their papers into iTrooper Explorer so that they can get published. That's number one. Number two, uh, we realized that that's not all that's part of IMS. We are where the micro industry gets together, network, do business, and the connection between people is so important. And, and therefore, we look really hard at uh, moving the conference in third quarter or the fourth quarter of the year. But as we progress towards uh, uh, the May 1 decision, it was not clear to us that uh, all the travel bans would be lifted, domestic or international, even by December. And, and so we wanted to, that's what, that was really our first option. But then we realized that, hey, we plan for that. And again, we get shut down by travel bans or that corporate bans are also in effect um, and not allowing their employees to travel. Uh, and we were hearing that as we talked to various members of, uh, of, of our uh, community that we felt that uh, let's get this done uh, and let's hold it virtual. Uh, we had to drop some parts of the program, but for most part, uh, most of the program we intend to have uh, and then to allow all three parts of our stakeholder community to participate. So can you tell us a little bit more about the virtual event? You have a ton of sessions in the conference. Can you tell us how the conference will work virtually? Sure, Pat. So following the track of many other IEEE conferences uh, that have been purely uh, a technical program with no trade exhibition, uh, 
Uh, we will have um, the, the technical talks pre-recorded as audio over PowerPoint. So, so right now, that relieves the offer from having to stay up like two in the morning or, or, or whatever, and also possibly bad connections. So, so those will all be in a, uh, basically a repository on the website when we launch the virtual presence. All those will be viewable for the duration of what we call the virtual event. Currently, we're looking at uh, anywhere from two to four weeks. So not normally, IMS ends in one week. So we will have a, an extended period of time so that people, engineers, students can view the material uh, over a longer period of time at their leisure and so forth. Uh, now, to keep the part of the conference that will be uh, more attractive to uh, anybody is that we will have live streaming and also recording of major uh, things that shows us how to have interaction. So for example, the plenary sections and then also some of the technical lectures and the panel discussions will all be virtual and live. So uh, there will be uh, a live in a, uh, a US time zone and then anybody from any uh, other time zone can view it as a pre-recording. Um, now the third part that's very interesting, I think right now is that we will be the, one of the first IEEE conferences to try to hold a virtual trade exhibition. All the ones that I've been talking to and discussion with IEEE headquarters have been just a technical academic conference. So we feel that the, tech, the, the, the vendor uh, exhibition community, which is in over 650 exhibitors, right, that come to IMS every year, we want to offer them that to participate virtually and also to provide their information, contact, to develop sales leads, their brochures, and then to uh, uh, have the opportunity in order to be uh, both in the virtual trade show as well as being sponsors. Uh, and we'll have sponsoring opportunities that we will offer uh, and then have that uh, really be a cohesive experience. So will companies be able to buy virtual booths then and have a presence where they can interact with attendees? Yes, uh, right now uh, our trade exhibition is being managed by Lee Woods in uh, MP Associates. So he will be setting up a, a program where those things will be offered and discussed with all the uh, current uh, exhibitors that are in IMS 2020. Um, and right now we are working on, uh, right now because of the fact that uh, not everybody may want this or they, they want to decide to do something else, uh, he's also working on uh, a refund policy. So that's currently being discussed. Great, well, it sounds like you covered all the bases. Uh... Really appreciate you taking the time to discuss this with me today, very, very quickly after you made the decision. Anything else you wanted to add about the event? I am certainly am disappointed that we weren't able to, uh, to welcome you and others to uh, the downtown Los Angeles area. But I think uh, uh, given the social, uh, this uh, uh, situation we're in, I think we're gonna do really well. Uh, in fact, one of the things that I consider a possible upside is that from looking at other IEEE conferences that have gone virtual, they have seen registration uh, double or triple what they normally get as physical attendance. So normally IEEE, uh, this uh, uh, IMS conference, we could expect uh, a physical count of 3,000, 3,500 physical attendance and then an additional people that go to the trade show. At this point, if we see that model uh, progressing, we're expecting to have at least 10,000 people attending. Wow, that's great news. So uh, great job. I'm glad you guys were very uh, communicative with everybody and letting them know what's going on. And really appreciate you doing this interview today. Thank you. Yeah, one thing I do want to remember, uh, remind you is we are looking at uh, offering um, registration for all current uh, IEEE MTT members for free. Wow, that's great. Well, we'll keep uh, everyone abreast of the latest happenings as I'm sure we'll follow along and look forward to the virtual event in August. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Pat, for your time. And we look forward to working with you at, uh, at uh, Horizon House and Microjournal and, uh, and using your media channels to get the word out.